Howdy, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center, taking a few minutes to talk about the dirtiest three-letter word in the MS disease space, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML. PML is a very rare opportunistic infection. It's caused by a little tiny virus called the JC virus. The JC virus infects about half of all humans over the age of 30. It's a very ubiquitous virus. Many of us have it, and it doesn't matter at all, and it never ever causes infection. When the, you have the wild type JC virus, it can't go to the brain, and it can't cause the infection, PML. If that virus mutates, and the immune system is suppressed in the central compartment in the brain, then you can create a situation where a patient can develop PML, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. PML is actually a demyelinating infection, and it presents itself typically in one of three clinical ways, either with sudden bilateral blindness, or sudden I can't move one side, like a stroke, or with significant personality changes. PML can be seen on an MRI scan. It's not easy, but there are characteristic findings on the MRI which will alert a radiologist or an MS clinician that the presence of PML as opposed to an MS lesion. It can be definitively diagnosed by doing a lumbar puncture or spinal tap and looking for the actual viral pro proteins in the spinal fluid using a technique called PCR. Now historically, PML was an extremely rare infection, almost never heard of. In fact, prior to the 1980s, there were only 700 cases described in all of the written literature. During the 1980s, during the AIDS epidemic, we saw a massive spike in the incidence of PML, which makes some degree of sense. Because if a patient had the JC virus and it happened to mutate, in the setting of HIV, their immune system was shot. And so that virus could then enter the brain and go unchecked and cause what was oftentimes uh, a very serious and sometimes fatal infection. MS uh, has seen a few cases of PML associated with some of our MS therapeutics. And today, I'm gonna to focus on Tysabri-associated PML. Tysabri, otherwise referred to as natalizumab, is a highly effective monoclonal antibody, which is given by an infusion taken once a month uh, to slow down MS. And it's a heck of a good drug. It's a very, very effective therapeutic. We have found that under certain circumstances, MS patients receiving Tysabri could be at increased risk of PML. Since the launch of Tysabri in 2004, we have seen roughly 800 cases of MS patients treated with Tysabri who developed PML, and about 160 of those were fatal. And so this is obviously a very serious topic. Now, keeping in mind that almost 190,000 people have been treated with Tysabri, and Tysabri is a highly effective medicine, it becomes imperative that we understand the risk benefit of Tysabri as it relates to PML, and we place that inside the context of the MS disease state. And so I plan on doing a follow-up video where I will very specifically talk about the actual numbers, the statistics involved. Today, I would simply like to share with you the risk factors for a person to develop PML in the setting of receiving Tysabri. There are three risk factors that I would like to talk about. Now, first of all, we're talking about a, an MS patient who is receiving the, the drug Tysabri. That's the patient population we're discussing. And amongst patients treated with Tysabri, there are three characteristics, three risk factors which might predispose them to be at increased risk of developing PML compared to someone else. So the first one is that they've been exposed to the virus. As I mentioned to you, only half of humans seem to have been exposed to the virus. And there's a blood test that can be done, and it's called the JC virus antibody test. And if we draw your blood and your JC virus antibody is positive, it does not mean PML, not at all. It means that you've been exposed to the virus. Now, if you've never been exposed to the JC virus, then your risk of getting PML is theoretical. That would be like saying, if you've never been exposed to HIV tainted fluid, you can't get AIDS. If you don't have the JC virus, you can't get PML. 
And so the first risk factor is the fact that you have the presence of the JC virus, which is tested through checking for antibodies against that virus. That's the first one. The second risk factor is whether or not you've ever received immunosuppression. So immunosuppressive agents, which are like chemotherapeutic agents in the MS space, oftentimes are things like mitoxantrone, cytoxin. There's other ones like oral medicines, such as Celsep, Imuran, or methotrexate, just to name a few. And it turns out that if you have previously received immunosuppression, your risk of PML goes up. And we think that's because when you give someone chemotherapy or immunosuppression, it causes point mutations. And a virus is much more likely to suffer from mutations when, get, when there's chemo on board compared to the human somatic cells. And so we think that it increases the risk that that wild type JC virus can then go into the brain. Now the third risk factor is the number of infusions with Tysabri. And what we've learned is with each subsequent year of Tysabri, if you are JC virus antibody positive, there's an increased risk of developing PML. In my next talk, I will go through the specifics of how you calculate an individual human's risk. Today, I would simply like to remind us that PML, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, is a rare condition caused by the JC virus. And in people with multiple sclerosis receiving a wonderfully effective therapeutic called Tysabri, there may be at risk of developing PML. And there are three risk factors. If they've been exposed to the virus, which is tested by the JC virus antibody, if they have received prior immunosuppression, and the total number of doses of Tysabri. Tune in next time when we get into some details. Again, my name is Aaron Boster. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day.